Welcome to this video tour of the campus of Eastern Nazarene College. One of the great privileges that I've enjoyed over recent months has been visiting pastors at district assemblies and retreats. It's also important for me to meet with our pastors because of our shared mission. Unfortunately, I've come to the realization that many of our pastors have not visited the campus of Eastern Nazarene College. This is unfortunate because so much of our support is due to the local church and the leadership of our local pastors. We're endeavoring to address this and want you to know that we value the support of the local church. We are the envy of educational institutions throughout the country because of the built-in support that we receive from our churches. What all that means to us is that we recognize our responsibility to you to share something of the projects and the needs of the campus that you support. This tape is an endeavor on our part to present you with something of the physical location of the campus here at uh, Quincy, Massachusetts. I've asked Cliff Hersey, who is our Director of Publications and Publicity, and a few of our students to take you on a tour of the campus through the video medium. It is my hope that you will become more familiar with the campus of Eastern Nazarene College through this video tour, and we trust that you will come to our campus and get to know us better in the future. Hello, my name is Cliff Hersey, Director of Publications and Publicity. Welcome to ENC. I want to take just a moment to introduce you to some of the people and the place that we call Eastern Nazarene College. I'm working under the assumption that many, perhaps most of you, have never been here before. For those alumni and friends who have been to campus, just sit back and take a reminiscent walk. First of all, let me introduce you to a few of the people who will be helping with the tour. First of all, to my left, a junior student, Regina Mashauria from Kenya, East Africa. To my right, Steve Kent from Halifax, Pennsylvania, a senior student. And Lisa Mendel, a junior from Brownstown, Indiana. I'm gonna let them go to take their places for our tour. We'll join you in just a few minutes. In 1994, Eastern Nazarene College will celebrate its 75th anniversary as a part of the city of Quincy, Massachusetts. What a privilege it has been to be a part, literally, of American history. Quincy is the birthplace of two American presidents, John Adams and John Quincy Adams, as well as the hometown of John Hancock, signer of the Declaration of Independence. The 15-acre site on which the college now rests was part of the home of Josiah Quincy IV, mayor of Boston. And until 1968, the mansion house, which was built in the 1860s, was used as a dormitory and a classroom building. But that was then. Living in Quincy today is still like living in a time capsule, one that surrounds the old with the new. Located just seven miles outside the city of Boston, ENC enjoys all of the benefits of a world-class city. Libraries, music and art centers, even professional sports teams. But all that becomes background to what's really important about uh, Eastern Nazarene College. Let me take you on a brief tour and introduce you to some of the places and some of the people who truly make ENC a unique place to be. I think Steve has had a chance to get in place by now, so let's join him on the top of the portico. From a bird's eye view, perhaps the most distinguishing element of ENC is the Central Campus Mall. This large green is the site of campus gatherings, including orientation, concert opportunities, and when the weather permits, our graduation exercises. The mall is surrounded on three sides by the Wollaston Church of the Nazarene, Monroe Hall, and Gardner Hall. Wollaston Church of the Nazarene is where we hold our chapel services. Monroe Hall, a woman's dormitory, portions of which were built in 1928 and which was named for Bertha Monroe, former professor and dean of the college. And Gardner Hall which houses administrative and faculty offices and classrooms and which was erected in 1930. Attached to Gardner Hall is the Nice Library, originally built in 1953 and which is now under reconstruction on the corner of Elm and East Elm Avenues. Unfortunately, all that we can show you right now is a big hole in the ground. 
But an artist's rendition of this exciting project, due for completion in early 1992, shows a brand new 33,000 square foot library space that will certainly become a signature building for the campus. Cliff is with a very important person to Eastern Nazarene College, one who has been very involved in the history of ENC. Let's meet him right now. Cliff? Ken Sullivan, our poet in residence for over 50 years, first came to the campus in 1938. We asked him, in light of the current building program, to reminisce a little bit about the changes that have taken place since he first came to Quincy. It's interesting, Cliff, this granite uh, stone the bench that we're sitting on it used to be the first step of the Manchester that was sitting right over there. When I first came to ENC in September 1938, I arrived here at 6 o'clock in the morning and it was raining cats and dogs and this is one of the first steps that I walked on at ENC up into the Manchester. At that time, the old cardboard palace was down there. Mansion was sitting here, and uh, there's there were a lot of trees on campus, not too many buildings. Then through the years, I've been here, I guess, a long time, and I saw the old cardboard palace that we used to live in taken down and the memorial hall and the shields dormitory was built up. The mansion lawn uh, gave way to the science building in 1957. Then the old Manchester was taken down and the student center was built and they salvaged the granite boulder as a bench. We saw the mansion come down and the angel hall built up. I saw the Spangenberg and the Williamson Halls come along and the Young Apartments and then of course the Angel Hall and now the new library. What hasn't changed about ENC? Let me tell you something interesting. When I sat on that old the old steps in the Manchester, six o'clock in the morning in 1938. The first sound I ever heard on the campus of Eastern Nazarene College was Paul Hetrick up in the old mansion praying. The first sound I ever heard. He became a missionary to Africa. I'd like to believe that that spirit hasn't changed on the campus of Eastern Nazarene College. Thanks, Ken. The Lehu Physical Education Center is home to all the Crusader sports, including men's and women's basketball, volleyball, cross country and tennis, as well as men's baseball, women's softball, and men's soccer teams. This facility, built in 1973, houses the gymnasium and locker rooms, a weight room, classrooms, office space, and other support facilities. Behind the building to the left are the soccer field, and the baseball and softball diamonds. Tennis courts are located nearby on Waterston Avenue. The classrooms and office buildings, besides those already mentioned, are located in various places. They are Canterbury Hall, Schrader Hall, Angel Hall, and the Cove Fine Arts Center. Canterbury Hall, the oldest surviving building on campus, houses the Social Science Division. Schrader Hall, named for James H. Schrader, longtime science professor, houses the Natural Science Division. Angel Hall, located on the site of the former Quincy Mansion and named for E.E. E. Angel, houses the Religion Department and the Graduate Division offices. The Edith F. Cove Fine Arts Center includes the 500-seat O'Connell Auditorium and houses the Departments of Communication Arts and Music. If that sounds like a lot of buildings for a 15-acre site, you're right, it is. But in building those facilities, ENC has been careful to maintain a beautiful and park-like atmosphere. Regina has some examples of just how beautiful spring in New England can be. Regina? Thank you, Lisa. Professor Werner Babcock, 
longtime professor of biology at ENC, planted so many unusual species of trees on the campus that the local high school sometimes uses the grounds as a part of its botanical tour for students. This copper beech tree behind me, which dominates the central part of the campus, was probably planted by the Quincy family when they built their mansion in the 1860s. Several trees survive from that period, including a horse chestnut tree in front of the Canterbury building, and a blue atlas cedar, native to North Africa, to the side of the building. Three metasequoias grow to the side of the Angel building, these trees were thought to be extinct until 1948 when they were discovered at the base of the Himalayas. These specimens were some of the earliest to be replanted in the United States. We seem to have a Japanese theme on campus as well. Two of the finest examples of Japanese maples in the Northeast grow right here on the campus. This maple outside of the young apartments is a wonderful mature example and the two dwarf maples outside of Monroe have shaded generations of ENC students also following the theme are these beautiful examples of Japanese cedar trees which are known for their perfectly straight trunks other more native examples abound on campus all of which makes spring a wonderful time here at ENC. The only places we haven't visited are the dormitories, which house about 650 students on campus. In addition to Monroe, which we have already seen, Williamson and Spangenberg house the female students, while the Memorial Dorm and the Shields Dorm house the male students. Thank you, Regina. This cozy community in the residential area just south of Boston serves you and your church by training young men and women for areas of service. But unfortunately, there's no way that this videotape can do justice to what we would really like, and that's for you to visit your regional college here in Quincy. Before we go, let me introduce to you Vice President for Institutional Advancement, Dr. Tom Barnard, and let him offer you a special opportunity. Thanks, Cliff. It's been our pleasure to greet many of you at district assemblies and retreats. That's on your turf, and it's great to be with you there. But this is your turf as well. We'd like to extend a special invitation to you, to your family, to visit us here in Boston. You can do so by uh, making an arrangement to stay in our dormitory sometime during June or July. If you would like to do that, please call area 617-773-6350 extension 361. We'd love to have you here. We'd love to give you a live tour of our campus. We're looking forward to your next visit. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Barnard, and thank you for watching this videotape. We hope it gives you a better understanding of what the regional college that you support with your budget payments is all about. If you'd like more information about the college or about its programs, please write to us. Write to the Office of Institutional Advancement, Eastern Nazarene College, 23 East Elm Avenue, Wollaston, Massachusetts, 02170-2999. We hope to be hearing from you soon. Thanks again for watching.